They call them knockout attacks, the knockout game. Mostly young black males traveling in groups targeting white people or quote unquote outsiders, whatever the reason, white people walking around by themselves in urban areas. We don't know if this is becoming more pervasive, but the media is definitely talking about it a lot more. And I think it's absolutely cowardly that individuals traveling in groups, people who are traveling in groups will point out a person and say, hey, I dare you to knock that person out with one punch. And somebody actually does that. You're targeting innocent people. Now, I could talk about the breakdown of the black family and the lack of fathers in the homes, but I didn't have a father in my home, and I didn't do anything that despicable. What can we do? I guess the police could step up their profiling of young black males, but I don't really recommend that. I don't really have, I don't know what the police really can do realistically. I think the best thing we can do if we're walking by ourselves is change our attacks. A, situational awareness. Even as I talk to you, I'm looking at what's behind me because I'm looking at uh, this, the display pointing back at me. I'm also looking around. So 360 degrees, know what's going on around you. As you walk by people, don't be so uh, distracted that you're not paying attention to what's going on. Because they're attacking women too. One instance they attacked, uh, Somebody got killed in New Jersey because of one of these attacks. They're happening in Philadelphia. They're happening in Chicago. They're happening in St. Louis, New York. Some a white guy, about 20-something or in his 20s or 30s in Pennsylvania. Uh, in Philadelphia got attacked. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He was just walking in. Somebody hit him at a food place. They're not stealing anything. They're just attacking these people. It's just violence. Is this how some people think they can prove that they're a man? By hitting random people? It's not how you prove you're a man. What can people do? Situational awareness. Even as I walk down the street, as I pass people, I'm very aware. Even if I'm listening to music, I'm paying attention to their uh, gestures, paying attention to their face. Just, uh, just paying attention to what's going on with the person. And if they do take a swing, I'll be more prepared to sort of back off. Even if I get hit, I don't absorb as much of the hit because I'm more aware of, you know, you know, because <laughs> so even if you get hit, if you're just walking, blah, 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 and boom, like that, yeah, it's going to be an extra surprise. It's going to be extra shock for you. So, uh, <laughs> not that I'm a, a fighting expert. It's just, you got to be aware. You got to be aware. All right, I got to go. But uh, negative interest rates. Crazy negative interest rates. <laughs> Negative interest rates, that's what they're talking about for the central banks. Uh, European Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, there's talk at Market Watch that there's people talking about actually negative interest rates for banks. Banks like to park their money in the central banks and they get an interest rate as, as a return. Well, with a negative interest rate, they're going to have to pay to park their money somewhere. So, I mean, so, I mean when did they do that for people? You got to pay to put your money in a, a bank account. I mean, how crazy would that be? I mean, so what do you guys think about that entire notion? What would you do if you were faced with something like that? Anyway, I went for a little 12-mile walk. It took me about four hours to do that 12. or It's, it's a little bit more than 12 miles because every time I went to an intersection, I sort of walked down the street to avoid the intersection because some people drive crazy around here in, 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 in Flint. So anyway, it's just it's good to go on a little 12, 13-mile walk every once in a while just to see what it's like and just know that you won't have any problems doing that. I could have went a lot faster, but I didn't have any money, so I wasn't really motivated to walk extra fast. And uh, plus, you know, I was more bored than tired when I was done. So anyway, guys, take, take a look at the footage. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And don't forget, the future belongs to those who prepare for today. Bye. What do you think about those knockout attacks? Do you think they're becoming more common? What about the, the negative interest rates? I mean, <laughs> do you think that would actually come to pass? Uh. Alright guys, I decided to give these survival rations uh, just a little bit of a try, a little bit of a taste to see if, how this stuff really tastes. No. Well, almost like this is packed with sugar or something, I don't know, it's like a weird protein bar. This isn't something I would really want. In a bad situation, I want something just a little bit more, you know, meat or something that's just more natural. This seems this has a really processed taste to it. I look for another option. I rather go with the MRE.
because at least with the MRE, you have something that's a little bit closer to actual food, you know? Okay, so I thought it'd be kind of cool to go on a little 12 mile walk outside the city of Flint. Essentially, I walked from near downtown Flint to Williams Gun Shop in Davidson, Michigan through Burton. It's a six mile walk and I walked there and I walked back. So it was about 12 miles, went pretty easily. It was, it was just more boring. I wasn't really tired per se, I was just more bored, you know? So, so if I ever have to walk out of the city of Flint, I know I won't have any problems doing that. But you know, the most important part is just getting out here. And of course the music really helps. Music makes walking a lot better for me. All right, getting close to Belsey, or Belsey Road. I'm listening to Breaking Benjamin. I'm also listening to the Smashing Pumpkins, listening to Vast. What else came on? I was listening to Garbage. I was listening to 30 Seconds to Mars. Uh, but anyway, oh yeah. I gotta say, I was helping Nick uh, change the, the brakes on his mom's car, that, uh, that Malibu. 2010, and man, I gotta tell you, he did the passenger side, I did the uh, driver side, and man, working on newer cars, is it's like night and day from the old ones I'm used to working on. <laughs> you're not dealing with all the rust, you're not dealing with all that crap, so it's a lot easier. I mean, it went super fast, super easy. I was really delighted. <laughs> and it's not often you hear somebody use the word delighted with uh, automobiles. <laughs>